Welcome to another episode of The Pursuit of Coconuts, where we're building a social enterprise to fight corruption, food insecurity, and support farmers. On the last episode, we just built a pond and the planters and filled it. Now we are needing to cycle to grow the bacteria and all the good stuff in our system to make it alive. One of the growing needs in the Philippines is a younger generation of farmers. Many farmers are over 60 years old and they are phasing out and a lot of the young generation do not want to get into farming. So one of the goals for us was to make our farm as beautiful as we can. We're focusing on the riprap, making things natural, focusing on landscaping and also the aesthetics of the place. So we'll add some of those details along with creating our own vermicast so we can add worms to the planters and make it as natural as possible. So check this out. So on another episode that we have, we went to go visit a farm that grew the worms. And these are the red wigglers. They grow pretty quick. They eat a lot of stuff. They're heat tolerant and they're making them great for the aquaponic system. Yes, worms do grow in the aquaponic system, and it's nice to have them because they actually eat some of the dead and rotting roots, keeping the system pretty clean and adding nutrients. We weren't quite ready to add tilapia or any fish to the system yet, but we started to get poisonous frogs and also mosquitoes laying their eggs inside the water. To fix this, I wanted to add just a few fish, not enough to really add too much ammonia, but enough fish that they can eat all those little critters. So we added about 20 palm-sized tilapia and it actually was awesome seeing them flourish in this system. Part of the cycling is adding oxygen to the system to make it robust and healthy. So we created our own custom Venturi system. With some research online, some ingenuity, we bought some materials here locally that we knew we can access and we created our own little Venturi system that actually works as a pump to push the solid waste to the other side of the pond. What we did was we angled the bottom of the pond, one higher than the other, so that the settlement would settle into the deeper end. And since the pond is pretty long, the Venturi system blows the water and air from one side, pushing all the waste to the other side. And that gets picked up in the other pump that gets pumped into the planters. Now those pumps are sewage pumps. So they'll pick up every bit of the waste and then it pumps it into a little screen that we put at the entrance of every planter. And that helps filter out some of the solid waste. Now everything about this farm takes a little bit more time only because this is not a familiar system for the locals. Every time we did something or every time we added anything or built anything, I would have to explain the why of why we were doing that. This helps them get educated. It also helps me in the long run when they're able to kind of help maintain and double check and triple check systems for me. Daily testing of the water was super important in the early stages of cycling. We tested mostly for ammonia, nitrites, nitrates, checked the pH levels of the water, and we sometimes checked for chlorine if we were adding a little bit of the local tap water here. So, All right, guys, so we're doing all the tests uh, for this water. Right now, we're looking good. We're at about 7.6 to 7.7 .7 on the pH, and it's staying pretty consistent there, which is perfect for fish to be able to survive in, especially the tilapia. They're pretty hardy. The ammonia has been sitting here for about a few minutes, and we're testing it, and the color looks to be 0.25 to 0.5 milligrams per liter. That's good. We got to bump that up to see if it goes back down. So what we want to do is get it down to a hardy part and then in the next day, see if it goes back down. If we can't get it, the ammonia up, that means the bacteria is really doing its job and eating the ammonia and then turning it into nitrite and nitrate. When we're looking at the nitrite, this is actually really dark. We've got a good, healthy, cultured nitrite. Look at that, that's probably at about five milligrams, which means we probably should have a lot of this converted into nitrate, which we do. I mean, we're looking at like 80 milligrams per liter and possibly even darker. Look at that, 
maybe I can put it on that side. So that means the ammonia is getting converted to nitrite and then nitrate. And this could be ready right now just to add some plants just to see how it goes. But we still need to add more ammonia to see if it gets eaten up. What the goal is to have no ammonia show up once we spike the ammonia, not spike, you don't want to spike anything, but add the ammonia in slowly so that raises the ammonia. And then after that, see if it drops in the next day or two or a day, just because that means the ammonia is getting eaten up by the bacteria. So. It might take a while to get that cycle going and consistent and fast, but that is the process of getting this setup dialed in. Why do we need to cycle? Well, that would be a very important question because our system is so new, we don't have all the healthy bacteria that would be existing, say, in natural soil over time. So how we do that is we continue to add ammonia. Now, ammonia can be done by adding directly ammonia, or the way that we're doing it is we're adding chicken poop. So ammonia exists in our urine, in our waste, and so we take that organic waste, put it into the water, and that water then starts cycling into to the system, the water carries the ammonia into the rocks. The rocks then start to grow bacteria. Now we naturally have these bacteria in the dirt, in the air, and the rocks that exist around us. It's just developing enough of it to exist in the system that we can convert the ammonia quickly enough to nitrites and then into nitrates. And nitrates is what the fertilizer or the food that the plants soak up. And so that creates a whole system and the ammonia then gets converted and ammonia is bad for the fish. So once it gets converted, it actually cleans the water and then that's how the system all works together. So it's super important to cycle your system. And this can take anywhere from four weeks to four months. And we landed about two and a half to three months. And I would suggest even going longer than that. It's really important to get a balanced system before you really go hardcore on it. At this early point in cycling, we will find lots of nitrates just because there's no plants yet added to soak that up. So on average, for those who don't know, you're probably looking at a one to two year system settling, meaning it might take a while for the systems to have its ups and downs, ebbs and flows and adjustments. And for you as a farmer to realize that your farm is a living system. So everything that it touches, everything that you add changes it a bit. Um, but once you learn all that, and then you'll kind of know the ebbs and flows of it all, and it'll be more consistent and more stable after about a year or two. We continue to add chicken poop and also some regular ammonia in there to get the system kick-started. The water started changing color from a clear to a brown. It was still clear enough, but it started getting a little darker. Also, you can see the covers for the pond. We kept that cover just because as the nutrients started to develop in the pond, if we left it open and the sunlight hit it, there's a good chance of algae growing. So we wanted to make sure that the algae didn't grow so that the nutrients can be focused on the plants in the planter. After a couple months of cycling, things are starting to settle down and now we're ready to add plants. So we went to the local nursery from our LGU. So the local government unit of Lobok actually has a nursery that they donate plants to local residents. And so we were a part of the program and we were able to get a few trays of plants to try out in the aquaponic system. So let's see how this turns out. All right guys, so today is a cool day. The LGU or local government unit is donating a bunch of these plants and we're gonna be adding plants to the aquaponic system. So they sprouted these, got them to grow big enough where they should last pretty well. We just gotta take off the dirt, clean up the roots and put them into the aquaponic system and let it do its magic. So exciting day. Me. Thank you, Lobok LGU. Ooh, no. We just planted two planters of over 150, 200 plants in less than an hour and a half. Yeah, what a great day for the farm. And we are gonna come back in the next few days to see how these plants are doing and we'll give you an update. Part of the farming for us is to have the family there. So the kids actually come once or twice a week and they actually learn the systems, they're documenting a lot of the stuff and it's a part of their schooling curriculum. Um, it's been a blast and yes, they are super hands-on. 
we are almost there. We're rounding the corner, guys, and we've made great time, and it's looking amazing. So now you get to see the before and afters, and you'll get to see us making the details and the pretty stuff come together, which is our favorite part. And now that we are starting to plant, we've got a bunch of seedlings and in the next episode you're going to see what's growing and what the next phase is to the social enterprise to fight corruption, fight the food insecurity looming around the corner and also empower and support local farmers. This is The Pursuit of Coconuts and on the next episode you'll see what we've got growing on our farm. Mm -hmm.